Hello and welcome. I'm back at my home base and uh, just on my recent trip I bought a generator uh, to uh, recharge the batteries in cloudy conditions like we have them today. Uh, there's cloud cover, there's not much solar production going on and uh, I really want to be able to go into, I want to say, the more northern parts uh, of the United States during fall, winter and uh, early spring, of course, as well. And uh, yeah, I have to live with uh, reduced solar production. And uh, I want to go skiing as an example, I came out of the ski resort, so there could be the potential of snow being on the solar panels. And uh, a generator will take care of recharging the batteries for me. So I have a Rotopax 4-gallon uh, gasoline uh, jerry can, so to speak, uh, mounted to my truck. Uh, I bought a generator before and that one didn't work, it failed on me, so then I decided, okay, um, let's go and do the right thing uh, by the Honda uh, 2200i uh, generator, which seems to be the gold standard of these small generators that are not very noisy. And so I just came back from the gas station, put some gasoline in, now we put oil in the generator, and then we test it out to see if the generator can actually power or deliver enough power to recharge the batteries. So I bought the generator for several reasons. Uh, so for one, I really want to go into areas of the United States with more cloud cover, especially during the darker season. So less sunshine, more cloud cover, rain, snow, and so on. And I want to be able to recharge my batteries and uh, spend some time up there. And uh, generator is the right thing to do. Uh, you might ask, okay, you just built this rig. You said uh, it has everything that you need. Uh, all the learnings from previous, uh, from your previous rig are in here with increased battery power and uh, in increased uh, solar and uh, so that is correct uh, there are certain things that I I don't want to say I did not plan for I expected them but I did not ex necessarily expect them uh, to be that dramatic so this rig uses more power especially when you go into the colder areas uh, I have the aqua hot heating and uh, hot water system and uh, when you're in really cold weather this thing runs constantly uh, throughout the night and um, produces hot air uh, to keep the camper warm uh, an unexpected benefit in quotes. Uh, side effect is that the uh, AquaHod seems to use a fair amount of power, battery power, uh, to function when it runs non-stop uh, through the night. So there is something that I did not know before, I did not expect, and it's just one thing, okay, if I want to go into, let's say, a ski resort and stay there for a week uh, where I will have less solar production, uh, I just yeah need to plan accordingly and uh, either drive uh, or in this case uh, I decided to go and get a generator. So that's one of the reasons why. Um, the uh, fridge of course uses a little more power. Uh, the uh, inverter is running 24-7. Uh, I could turn it off or I should turn it off at night so that it reduces uh, the power consumption. But overall I'm using more power than expected and uh, that's going to be addressed by having a generator and really making this thing work. I have enough space to the generator so I don't have any concerns uh, doing that and it's just I want to say um, a good practice uh, for my type of travel so let me get the generator out I will put some oil in and then we'll test it out to see um, if it can charge uh, the batteries and at what um, pace at what speed uh, can I see power go back in the batteries So I have my little uh, table stand here, and uh, well, this is the uh, Honda generator, the EU2200i, and uh, we're going to put some oil in it and uh, see if we can make this all work. So this is uh, what it looks like on the inside with the Honda generator. Uh, the oil in the oil tank is down here, and that's also the dipstick that will be able to tell me that I have enough oil in there or not. So right now it's completely empty. Uh, I'd better go and get the instructions out and uh, we'll need to figure out how much uh, will have to go in there. Maybe I should just leave this open for the moment. So I have the generator open now and I just checked it needs uh, 0.44 liters or 14 ounces of engine oil. So we get a measuring cup and uh, measure the exact amount of oil that needs to go into the engine. Uh, I still have to uh, level the generator. It's standing in my driveway, which is uh, slightly angling down. So I will do that and uh, then we should be at a point where we can uh, start the engine for the first time and uh, make sure that the generator itself, uh, of course, works. 
So I did not film putting the oil in, but the oil is exactly at that level as described in the instruction manual. Uh, you can see this is all nice and clean here, so I didn't spill any oil. Very good. I guess we'll put this uh, cover back onto the generator and then see if there's anything else we need to do before running this for the very first time. So I moved the uh, generator to the side of the camper. Uh, I'm in my normal home base neighborhood, so I will not run the generator for super long uh, to avoid uh, bothering the neighbors with the noise, but uh, we have to test it out. So uh, I have my power cord ready here. We'll plug this in after the generator is running. Uh, I have the shore power connection uh, here set up as well. So this is all the way it needs to be. Uh, once the generator is running, we'll just plug it in and then we'll monitor on the Victron app uh, how much power we're actually putting into the batteries. So first we're uh, setting up the fuel cap to on because it has a, a vent or a valve up there uh, for the fumes. So you turn this to on when you run, run the generator. All right, we're setting the choke to off and uh, then we'll give it a couple of good pulls and see if the engine will start. And last but not least, uh, of course, set the engine switch to on and uh, then we'll see if this uh, Honda EU 2200i generator will actually run. Let's go and do it. So the generator is running, it is really very quiet. In comparison to the other generator that I had for a couple of days, uh, this is already significantly quieter. So let's go and uh, get the Victron app open and uh, then we'll take a look uh, what happens when we plug this thing in. So I hope you can see this, we are at 57% uh, state of charge. Uh, solar is bringing in about 8.8 and uh, power is coming in as 117 watts so now i'm gonna plug in the cable and uh, then we'll see uh, what the honda generator will do So as you can see here, nothing is happening at the moment. Here we go. It's going up to 16, 20, 40, 67, 85, 96, 97. So close to 100. So we're bringing in roughly 90 amps. We're now at 1300 watts. And the generator has sped up, so it is running. Uh, definitely delivering a uh, good charge so that will not take very long to recharge the batteries if I would run the generator for a longer period of time. And we're back down to about 9 amps of solar power coming in, 124 watts. So uh, as expected, uh, looks like the generator is doing what it's supposed to do. So that's very good. And uh, I'm very happy with uh, this performance. We'll have to see how it works out in the wilderness when I run it for several hours, but uh, I don't have any worries uh, about the Honda generator. I only heard really good things about it, so um, should be uh, a good solution for me to charge the camper batteries when out and about. So let's have a look how I'm storing the generator inside my storage box here. So I have my existing shelf. If you watch the tour of this rig, uh, you probably remember that I talked about the shelves that I put in here. So uh, I did not have to make any changes. The generator fit in almost perfectly. You can see up here, this is where the uh, gasoline tank opening is. 
so there's about one and a half, maybe two inches of space. Uh, fits perfectly in here. Uh, I need to move it to the far right. It's now touching the wall, so that's good. Uh, I moved my chairs here into the middle and uh, that also works out perfectly. And my Morflate inflating tire inflation system uh, is sitting here. So uh, from that perspective, uh, it's, it's fitting in perfectly. Uh, now I can very easily close the storage cabinet, storage box. And uh, there's my generator, it's out of the way. Uh, these boxes can hold quite some weight according to Ross Monster, so uh, shouldn't have any problems there. And uh, yeah, that's uh, where the generator fits in. I have my usual power cord here, uh, the one that I take on the road, and uh, the adapter for shore power is in here as well. Right now it's plugged in, uh, as you noticed from earlier in the video. So that uh, was a successful test of the EU 2200i Honda generator. Uh, previously I had a Champion Power equipment generator and previously sounds, sounds wrong. I bought it like two and a half weeks ago. I uh, had it for roughly nine days uh, and it broke. I couldn't even run a hot water kettle anymore. Uh, that hot water kettle is 1500 watts and the generator was supposed to have 2500 uh, and it just uh, tripped the overload button all the time. So that generator somehow went back uh, for whatever reason I cannot tell but uh, that's when I decided I need to make this work uh, I want to be able to uh, camp in areas just like in the weather today uh, with overcast skies where solar production is not really much that I have the power that I uh, need to go through a work week and uh, not have to worry about that I need to idle the truck or drive to recharge my batteries because I'm in a situation where uh, that might impact me so the uh, Champion uh, power equipment generator was uh, roughly $700 compared to the $1,100 uh, I paid for this one, plus tax and of course all that stupid stuff. But uh, the other part of this uh, story is that uh, these generators are no longer being sold in California. So uh, I bought them in Arizona. Uh, when I was there on my last trip and uh, yeah, it's, I don't want to say kind of stupid. I understand why California is doing what it's doing, but it still doesn't make sense uh, from, from that perspective. So I bought it in Arizona. Uh, I have it. It's, it's working great as we just saw here in the video. And uh, that really gives me the peace of mind that I can now go out back into the wilderness uh, without having to worry about power. It also allows me to go into the more northern states during the darker season of the year where there's less solar production. And with the generator, I can even uh, sit it out when it's raining and uh, just get enough battery power back into the system. I mentioned earlier there are uh, power consumers here inside the camper that I did not plan for, which I didn't know, or the impact I didn't know. So when I was camping up uh, near Flagstaff, I had a very cold night, 14 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And uh, the aqua hot heating kept the camper nice and warm, but it ran almost nonstop the entire night. And uh, apparently the aqua hot uses a good amount of power uh, from the batteries. And uh, that is just something if I go and do winter camping further north, uh, I need to accommodate for that. And the generator is the right tool in this case. I do not have a significantly more space for solar. Uh, I have a 400 watt external solar panel that is coming in today that I will take as well. I had a 220 watt solar panel before for, but um, I wanted to make sure that I can do my part to run on solar as long as possible before using the generator. So ideally, I do not want to use the generator very often. It's more a backup option in case solar doesn't work. I'm, I'm ready to head out again. So I will be here at my home base for another week and then uh, head out uh, probably for around 10 days uh, exploring somewhere here in Southern California. And I'm pretty sure there might be an opportunity to test out the generator and let it run for a few hours and then report back to you what my experience is with this Honda generator. So that should be it for today's video. I hope you like this type of content. If you do, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then I would say I see you next time in my next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.